In the previous video, we did an overview of the basic sustainability assessment tool, gave some background to it, some context to it. In this video, we're going to be doing a quick walkthrough of the kinds of questions that are in the tool. The instructions tab have at the top a table of contents. It shows what the various tabs are, where the questions are, so these equate to the tabs across the bottom. And then there's some information about the color coding of the cells. So the legend says that the yellow fields are ones that you put input into. They're pre-populated with some sample data to give you a sense of how the calculations work. The light purple cells are where the calculations are done. The white fields are for instructions and some further explanations. And the question mark has some additional information about their adjacent line items, comment cells. So as we go through this, we'll have a chance to see what that looks like. Let's start with the organization profile. So this is pretty basic information about the organization. The name, the address, phone number, brief description of, of the organization, uh, some financial information, some employee or size information, uh, an opportunity to show uh, the ownership of the organization and, and the extent to which equity seeking populations are represented in the ownership of the organization. Whoever it is that's vouching for the integrity of the completed assessments, so an officer or a director, somebody senior in the organization. And you may also have it verified by a qualified external person to make sure your methodology and your data sources are appropriate. So that's the information that you put into the organization profile. Let's take a look at the governance question. The governance question is laid out the same as most of the questions are in this survey. So there's a title at the top. There's an overall score that you're going to be generating as you fill in the various line items under, underneath. There's a description of what it's all about. And notice that this one is talking about the extent to which the organization has embedded sustainability considerations in their governance and management systems. Over on the right hand side are uh, some buttons that give you an opportunity to indicate whether it's been done at all or partially or totally. And there is some preformed text. So the yellow cells are the ones that you pay attention to. Um, and you can put in Freeform text. This has got some information in there to give you an example of what it might be, but you can put in whatever you want. And that's basically just documentation for your own purposes. You'll notice that beside these cells, there are, are comment cells. If you want to see what those are, notice you can just see the corner of it. You can go over to the side a little bit, mouse over it and it pops up. So these are comment cells that give additional information, explanation about the adjacent line items. If you want to freeze it, just right click on the cell, say edit comment, click on that, and it freezes the comment so that it, you can read it a little bit more leisurely. You can also blow it up if you want. So if you want it a little bit larger, we can blow up the entire um, tab, the entire screen and click on it and it's a little bit easier to read. So the controls at the bottom right hand corner are the same as they are for any Excel workbook. So the questions, let's take a look at those. We'll shrink it down a little bit. So the, the questions are ones that you can indicate, as we said before, whether you are doing them at all or partially or yes. And if you want to know how to get a full score of 100% on this, of course, you need to click all of the yeses. So if you did that, you'll notice how the score changes at the bottom and correspondingly, the score changes at the top. So that's how all of these questions work. Yellow cells for your input, blue cells for additional information, and the score at the top is being calculated in a purple cell, which is automatically showing you what it is that you need to do to get full marks. Now let's take a look at the energy question. Click on that tab. It screens because it's environmental. At the top, there's the title as before, the overall score as before. Very brief description of what this is all about. Comments that you can mouse over and get more information on if you want them. 
And there's a five level scale on which environment or sorry, energy is being assessed and is consistent with the scale that's used for water and some of the others, greenhouse gas emissions and so on. So the first level is that you don't pay attention to your energy use. We do not currently monitor and record energy use. If you click that, you get zero, both in the overall score and at the bottom of this column. If you don't click that, but you are monitoring and recording your energy and electricity and fuel usage, including your renewable energy usage, you have an opportunity to put in here how that's going, the extent to which you are um, benefiting from energy efficiency, reducing your dependence on non-renewable energy relative to a, a baseline year, and how much renewable energy you're using. If you want full marks on this column, you need to have set targets for energy, met targets for energy, and have a science-based goal of using 100% low-impact renewable energy regardless of organizational growth. You click that, you get 100% there. If you have totally reduced your dependence on fossil fuels, this would be 100%. And if you are using all renewable energy, this would be 100%, and the number at the top is 100%. So you can see the formula up there, which is doing the calculation based on the average of these two and that number there. So that how it, that's how it works for all of these questions, whether it's energy or water or procurement or greenhouse gases, they're all laid out the same. Let's just skip over to the positive pursuits or positive impacts question and take a look at that one because all of the others are basically laid out the same. This one's a little bit different because what this one is doing is it's giving you opportunity to show the extent to which you are being restorative or regenerative or doing something more than simply reducing the harm that you're causing, you're actually doing some good. You'll notice that this is a bonus score and there are two kinds of questions. One that gives you a chance to indicate the positive impact you're having on environmental issues, that's the green one. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll come to another question, which is about people and the way in which you're helping people meet some basic needs and healthier and safer lives and more productive and informed lives. So let's go back up to the environmental one and show you how this works. So there are a number of ways in which you can improve your impact either directly or indirectly on the environment. And it gives you credit for those. So it asks you the percent of your products and services by revenue that help our customers reduce their negative impacts on the environment, either from an energy perspective, water perspective, greenhouse gases, other kinds of emissions, waste, or in terms of your impact on ecosystems. So if your products and services do that, you indicate how much of them do that. And then they're factored down and there's an explanation of how and why that's done. And then you can also show that perhaps what you're doing is you're making these products and services available to others, not customers, but others who can't afford the full rate and you get benefit for the reduced rate that you're making those available for. And then you're also given an opportunity to indicate whether you are helping other organizations address these kinds of issues, either directly or indirectly through your donations and how much of your revenue or your equivalent revenue is represented by the size of those donations. So you have a way here of getting credit for good that you are directly or indirectly doing on environmental issues. And it's similar for the positive impacts that you might have on people in those three ways, same three ways. So that's an, an overview of the kinds of questions that are asked. Next, we'll be taking a look at the summaries that are generated as you're doing all of these and how to interpret those.